entered the city, something on their heads lit up. One moment, please, you two. It appears this is your first time visiting Sumeru City. Oh, yeah, that's right. But how did you know that? Because there's currently no information on either of you in the Akasha. But no need to worry, that won't prevent you from entering the city. In fact, the Academia conveniently provides each traveler to Sumeru City with a device. Perhaps you two have heard of the Akasha before. It's our beloved Greater Lord Nukadavata's lasting legacy. A treasure trove of collected knowledge. After centuries of tireless research on the Akasha, the Academia created one of its most ingenious inventions, the Akasha Terminal. As long as you are within Sumeru's borders, you may use an Akasha terminal to connect directly to the Akasha and access any knowledge you need. I should mention that due to technical limitations, the operation of Akasha terminals will be much smoother and more effective in large cities such as Sumeru City and Port Hormos. Oh, so this is the thing that Tainari was telling us about. It sounds pretty amazing. You two are quite fortunate. Until recently, it was standard practice to only issue Akasha terminals to outlanders who spent an extended amount of time in Sumeru. However, this policy was recently changed, and now all travelers are issued one upon arrival. Here are your Akasha terminals. Please handle them with care. <laughs> it kind of looks like a leash. To activate it, simply hold it in your hand and say the following phrase to yourself. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their voice of wisdom. Oh, since this little doodad lets you access knowledge, maybe we can use it to find a way to meet Lesser Lord Kusanali. Let's give it a try. <clears throat> May the mighty God bless us with their... <gasps> Whoa. Just now, something clicked, and Paimon suddenly knew how to use this thing. It seems all we need to do is concentrate on what we want to know, and BAM! You get it! Oh, that'll come in real handy! Exactly! That is the power of the Akasha! And with that, let me officially welcome you both to Sumeru City! May the wisdom of the Dendro Archon always be your guide! Okay, now that we're in, we can check the Akasha about Lesser Lord Kusanali! Let Paimon try! Hmm... <gasps> 500 years ago, the sages found a newly born deity from within some scorched ruins. The deity now resides in the sanctuary of Suristana. Hmm, seems pretty similar to what Kali was telling us. Okay, next, let's concentrate on asking how to meet her. Hmm... Uh... Huh? Uh, Hyman doesn't sense anything. Um... Oh, come on! Ugh. Focusing on this question feels like when you have something you're trying to remember and it's on the tip of your tongue, but you just can't think of it. Ugh. Paimon's brain is exhausted. Oh, smart idea. But what are you going to ask it? Uh-oh. Hyman's getting all tim- just arrived in Sumeru? <sighs> well, seems that he's from Sumeru and even has a position in the Academia. Maybe he'll be able to access more info from the Ac... Let's see. Tainari wrote an address on the letter's envelope. Oh, it's not far from the city's... Hello, are you Rohawi? Yes, that's me. Can I help you? What? Tainari? Uh, please, th there's no need to say anything, really. 
Sure, I admit that the article I published last month wasn't my best work, and me- Here! This is a letter- Oh, let me see... Oh! Ooh, what a relief. You two nearly scared the life out of me. So, you two just have some questions for me? Seems even Tainari acknowledges my innate ability for procuring information. So, what is it you two would like to know? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You mean you want to meet the Dendro Archon herself? Ah, uh, this isn't exactly my area of... Hmm, sorry. What? You too? But what about your abilities for getting information and all that? Well, as I said, this isn't my area of expertise. I am but a lowly re- All I know is that ever since Lesser Lord Kusanali returned to Sumeru, she's- n Huh! Didn't expect her to be- The Dendro Archon is somewhat of a recluse. Perhaps she just doesn't want to entertain visitors. What? But- <laughs> No need to- And besides, you two should consider the bright side of- In this world, there will always be information you cannot obtain from the Akasha, and things- you Take me, for example. It's a miracle if my brain cells can spit out one paper every three years. But Tainari? That guy can publish three papers in just a single year. Uh, okay. Don't mention it. If you two ever want information about things like who's been promoted within the academia or re Hey, come on! This is a survival skill at- uh, So what do we do now? Even- Huh? Like who? Oh, you're right! Catherine! The adventure- Watch out for Astra Abyssosk. Hello, Traveler and Paimon. Catherine, we need your help with something. Understood. The Adventurer's Guild is always ready to serve you. With what do you require assistance? We want to meet with Lesser Lord Kusanali. Do you know a way we can do that? You two wish to meet with Sumeru's Archon. Understood. Please wait. I apologize, but I am unable to call up any relevant information in the Akasha. I'm also unable to locate any pertinent information in my personal memory. Aww, another dead end. Well, if Catherine can't help us, then we really don't know anyone else to ask now. Please do not worry. In Sumeru, the Adventurous Guild does not serve as the vanguard of information. Rath, they take on various contracts and work. An Eremite brigade called the Corps of Thirty is in charge of Sumeru City's defenses. Not only are they the oldest brigade... Corps of Thirty? Supposedly. They are named as such because their ranks named Asfant, an advisor with the Corps of Thirty, maintains good relations with the Adventurer's Guild. If you'd like to get in contact with him, you're welcome. Welcome. The Adventurer's Guild told me to expect you to. It's nice to meet you, Asfand. We'd like to ask you 
about something. I see. So, Catherine's the one who sent you this way. Ha! <laughs> it's true that the Aramites' network is vast, but even I can't help you meet the Dendro Archon. Wait! Seriously? That's it? <laughs> Afraid so. The Aramites aren't terribly religious, so we don't know much about divinities. As far as the Akasha goes, we can access even less than you. We originally came from the desert. The gods there died off long ago. Since those days, we've used our own two hands to carve out a living. We don't beg gods for their aid. It isn't just us, though. If you ask me, I think most in Sumeru aren't interested in lesser lord Kusanali. Oh? Just take the Academia, for example. They're the ones who truly rule Sumeru. Although they believe in gods, most of them only care for the late, greater Lord Rugadavada. In their eyes, she was the one who founded Sumeru and gifted us with the Akasha. Lesser Lord Kusanali just happened to inherit her legacy. Because of the Academia's influence, most citizens are more familiar with Greater Lord Rukadavada, and hold her in greater esteem. Not to mention that Lesser Lord Kusanali never makes an appearance, and the Academia never announces anything about her. As far as the people of Sumeru are concerned, she's just a god that exists. And that's all. Really? After hearing all of that, Paimon sort of feels bad for Lesser Lord Kusanali. Ha! <laughs> but who knows? We're all just guessing when it comes down to it. Besides, I'm sure the God of Wisdom doesn't worry about her reputation among people like us. Alright, well, thanks for the info, Osfond. Haha, <laughs> no problem. Always happy to help out the Adventurer's Guild. <sighs> Seems Osfond was right about most people's attitudes here. Not only are they not interested in the Dendro Archon, they even say stuff like, If the Akasha doesn't think I should know, then I don't need to know about it. We've been asking for information non-stop ever since we got to Sumeru. But the harder we try, the more helpless everything seems. Isn't there at least one person in this entire city who cares about Lesser Lord Kusanali? Oh, uh, you two are interested in Lesser Lord Kusanali? Huh? Who are you? From the sound of it, you two are outlanders who recently arrived here. You've been asking around for information on Lesser Lord Kusanali, right? Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot to introduce myself. I'm Dunyarzad, one of Lesser Lord Kusanali's faithful followers. Whoa, really? Then do you know how we can meet with her? I'm afraid I can't help you with that. But your conversation earlier did happen to remind me of a legend about the Dendro Archon. Sure. It goes like this. Long, long ago. There was a man who heard a prophecy. It predicted that a great calamity was about to befall him. Panicked by what he heard, the man sought out the Dendro Archon in hopes that she would bless him, with the wisdom to help him escape his predicament. The man journeyed across deserts and through rainforests, and experienced tribulations of every kind. However, he still couldn't find any trace of the Dendro Archon. In despair, he thought, alas, the Archon has abandoned me. He then had no choice but to sorrowfully resign to his fate. Okay, and then what happened? And then, the calamity came. But to his own surprise, the man felt somehow emboldened by the trials of his journey. By relying on his own strength, he managed to overcome the adversity. At that moment, a bird perched upon his shoulder. This bird was, in fact, an avatar of the Dendro Archon. She said, 
Oh, Archon Seeker, do you now understand? She and her wisdom have long been found by you. Along your journey, we were in every flower and blade of grass, every ray of sparkling sun and every breath of dancing wind. So long as you continue to think and ponder, we'll be wherever you go. Seems like this story is also one of the Dendro Archon's avatars. Dunyarzad, since you worship Lesser Lord Kusanali, can you tell us anything else about her? Of course. So did you two know that, uh... uh I'm, I'm terribly sorry, but it seems something's come up now. Uh, let's chat another day. Hey, have you two seen a brown-haired girl wearing a purple? Uh, did she have bandages wrapped around her wrists? Yes, that's her. Uh, yeah, she went that way. Quick, after her. <laughs> that should keep him busy for a while. Let's hurry and find Dunyar's on. Oh, you startled me there. You can relax, Nick. Uh, really? Oh, thank you so much. Uh-oh, looks like they're... Huh? More of... No, wait, I... Uh... Okay, sounds... All right, let's move out. shouldn't be able to find us now. Wait! Stand down, Dia! My lady, who are these two? They're travelers that I met on the street just a moment ago. They happened to notice that you were all searching for me, so they helped me hide. I see. In that case, you two should scram. There's nothing here for you. Wait a sec! Who the heck are you? And why are you shooing us away? I'm Miss Dunyarzad's bodyguard, here to see that she returns home safe and sound. <sighs> My lady, let's get going. You've been gone for so long that your parents are worrying themselves sick. And if I refuse to go with you? It'd be easier for the both of us if you cooperated. But if you insist on not going, then I'll have to carry you like a sack of potatoes. Hey! Dunyarzad already said she doesn't want to go back! Why are you still pushing her? Stay out of this. You don't understand the situation. Sorry, my lady. Even though I'm your bodyguard, your parents are my employers. I have to answer to them. How much? Wait, what? How much mora do I have to pay you to become your employer? So you never listen to my parents ever again. Double? A triple? Give me some time and I'll get that much. My lady, this isn't about mora. I don't know what you think of us Aramites, but let me say this. I like mora, but I'll never go against my principles. That's why I'm here looking for you. 
sure, it's an order from my employer, but my conscience was also telling me it's the right thing to do. And knowing your health, carelessly running around like this is gonna hurt ya. For the sake of those who love you, don't be stubborn. No, you're wrong. I'm aware of my limits and I know what I'm doing. Honestly, the only people being stubborn right now are my parents. And they know perfectly well that it makes no difference if I'm at home or not. They still won't accept reality. And every time I bring this up, they just change the subject. Dia, you've been living with us a long time already. This should be old news to you. <sighs> Dia, I know it hasn't been easy for mother and father, and I'm grateful for everything they've done for me. But there's someone else in this world I'm also grateful to. Because she saved me. The love I have for her is the same I have for my parents. This is my life and my last chance. So I want to do something meaningful. My lady, are you sure what you're doing now is meaningful? Yes, I'm sure. At least, it is to me. <sighs> Fine, I won't ask you to return home anymore. But let me make something very clear. I'm only doing this because I respect your determination, not because I agree with you. Thank you, Dia. <sighs> Sorry for being so rude just now. My nerves were acting up. And I even brought up your payment in such an offensive way. Uh, don't worry about it, my lady. I did say that I like Mora. Besides, that's our next topic of conversation. Today's little excursion caused such a ruckus that every single bodyguard at the estate was deployed. It wouldn't be easy to hide things from your old man. Since this definitely won't be your last escapade, here's a little tip. You should at least make it look like your room and things are still in order when you leave. Also, you'll need someone to cover you for when you're out and about. So, I'll let you hire me, my lady. This way, everyone wins. As for the pay, let's say mm, half of what your father pays me. We can settle the bill when we return to the estate. Okay, deal. Yay! Looks like they've been... <clears throat> I'm fine, really. I just... <sighs> My lady, stop trying to look tough. I'm sorry for worrying you two. Sure, after you rest... The